Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Lyrically Lydia, the show made for musicians by a musician, the show made for music lovers by a music lover. On today's episode, we highlight Anastasia Bath, the incredible pop singer and songwriter all the way from Nizhny Novgorod, Russia, whose journey has taken her to New York City in the United States. Today, Anastasia will share with us a little bit about her journey through her struggle with an eating disorder while offering us a message of hope and inspiration through her beautiful song, Evaporate. I know that we all can't wait to hear what she has to say, and we're so grateful to her for sharing this message with us. Please welcome Anastasia Bast. Hi, how are you? Hi, so good to see you. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, just still in the house. Bored in the house, bored in the house, bored. <laughs> bored in the house and I'm in the house, bored. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on how is new york like what's going on there is it um new york is finally coming back to life i think they lifted the curfew this morning oh great yeah, yeah. and i think starting tomorrow businesses are going back in business really as yeah, slowly but surely like all of them or just like essential businesses or i think our mayor like he announced the steps. I'm not sure what they are, so we're the first step. Oh, cool. Okay. Oh, that's so good. That's so hopeful. Restaurants are open up at the limited capacity. Mm-hmm. Oh, good. But that's good enough. Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We've all missed it so yeah. much. Oh. Well, it's great that things are getting back to life because it has been a struggle. It has been a struggle. <laughs> Make us appreciate things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Absolutely. Well, you and I go really far back, way back, and um, in Boston, from our Boston times at Berkeley, and I wanted to know from you, um, just how was that experience moving to a new country and, you know, being at school in Boston and everything? Honestly, when I decided to move to Boston to... United States I didn't have much expectations because I thought it was gonna be impossible to finish Berkeley because it's like the best music school in the world Mm. I thought it was going to be an incredible challenge to be in a new country but I had a dream yeah (laughs) I I did have a dream I've always wanted to do music and the opportunity presented itself to go to Berkeley. So I risked it all. And honestly, it has been probably the greatest experience of my life, but it's, but it was something completely different than what I expected it to be. Mm. In which way? Um, I think it gave me a life school more than, music (laughs) it taught me life more than music for sure and um the beauty and the that uh, like the greatness of Berkeley is in its people not necessarily in the skills that they teach you yes yes so you get to a part uh, the biggest part of the educational process is outside of classes Mm. is when you meet people when you work with people when you collaborate and yeah. yeah I made one of my best my best friends for life at that school <laughs> one of them is right over there Woo! girl you know you're my sister yeah I, I actually would agree with you on that point that I think that all of our education definitely came from interacting with each other and also like networking just kind of seeing how the industry is you know and also seeing how to coexist with each other, all having kind of the same goals and not letting, you know, any ego or jealousy take over because it's kind of like, we're all in this together. So we had to do. That was a challenge. Mm, yeah. Berkeley definitely hits your ego. Yeah. 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 Because they're just all of these people from all over the place, all over the world who do the same thing you do, who have more experience, less experience, or they have more skill because they studied longer or, you know, and you're just kind of like, what do I do with this? But we all are just like, I think what we managed to do well 
is I think we manage to pool our resources and pool our knowledge so well within our, you know, within our friend group. Encourage each other, for sure. Definitely. I think that's so nice and why we stay such great friends is that super important. Yeah. The most important. The most important. I also wanted to ask you, so you're from Russia, you're from Nizhny Novgorod. I wanted to know what was it like the music in Nizhny Novgorod in Russia in general? How did you find yourself as a musician? How did you find yourself as a singer? What, how did it all start? Um, None of my family has have anything to do with music. I'm the only person who had that urge for music. And as as far as I remember myself from the youngest age, I was singing. I was a part of plays and kindergarten and school. And at some point when I was probably eight years old, I came up to my mom was like, mom, I need a voice teacher. Mm. I need I, I need somebody to teach me how to sing because this is what I want to do. Yeah. And I've I've tried many teachers. I've tried classical singing, I've tried folk singing, and then um we found this young young lady who went to Berkeley College of Music and who taught jazz. And a lot of people uh, were teaching uh, jazz singing in, in Russia, but it's more like traditional jazz. But she actually had the opportunity to go to Berkeley to study with the people who know more than anyone about it. So I auditioned for her school um, and started uh, taking lessons with her. She took me all around the world. We've been to Spain, we've been to Germany, uh, we've been to many other countries, <laughs> we've been to Poland, and um, for competitions, for um, educational conferences, and that uh, gave me uh, kind of like an idea what music is like outside Russia, and it gave me, how, uh, it gave me an idea of how much more there is out there. And that gradually prepared me to move to Boston. You must have been really young when you were traveling and doing competitions, right? You were quite young? Yeah, I was uh, 13. Wow, that's super cool. And how would you say that it shaped you finding your sound in, because you are now, correct me if I'm wrong, a pop singer, right? You specialize also in like very beautiful electronic music and also you do I mean I know that you sing gorgeous ballads as well but I think you love pop music as right is that true yeah that's my it took me a while to admit it because but in my for some reason maybe it's not true I think pop music doesn't have that much of a good reputation so I used to say mm. I want to sing jazz I love only jazz <laughs> but then I gave in I was like no you know what I want to do pop but you're phenomenal at it. And actually, I think it's such a common misconception because I think pop music is probably one of the hardest genres to sing because it's you have to be have a really good vocal command. You know, you have to have a very extensive range of your voice, also a lot of power with your voice. But also you need to be able to sing things in a very contemporary way that are fresh and the style is always changing. So I think that it requires constant research, restructuring of how you do things. I mean, it's a very demanding genre. And you constantly have to come up with something new and original, but keep yeah. it. Exactly. And that's the, that's the difficult thing in pop. And I think you execute that very well, actually. Your writing and your singing is spectacular. Oh, so, thanks. yeah, I, I really think so. It's something that's very admirable about you because not only can you sing so beautifully and also perfectly in English, you write songs in English with such depth and with such meaning, but also they are so current. They're super relevant to the time that you're performing and recording the songs, the music. So I think you've done a great job choosing that, that path in particular. I think it perfectly suits you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what it means to follow your passion. Yeah. Yeah. It's wonderful. 
Well, I wanted to kind of get into a little bit more about you. I have listened to, and we will all hear your song evaporate at the end of this video, but I know that that song also is written by you because also it has a great depth and meaning to it, a very personal meaning behind it. Um, I want to know from you a little bit about your story, um, how you came to this point of discovering yourself through you know, your struggles with an eating disorder. How did you reach this beautiful point, a breaking point in which you finally have set yourself free from that pain and that hurt? And how was your journey? Well, it's, it was a long journey. Mm -hmm. It took me 10 years um, from the point when I realized that I was having an eating disorder and to the point where I was able to say that I have recovered. Mm -hmm. um, it all started in college, as it does for many people. And at first, I didn't know what was happening, but gladly um, in the U.S., this issue has been um, more researched. Um, mm -hmm. And I went to a doctor, I went to a therapist, and they told, they explained me what, what I was dealing with. And at first, of course, I did, like the first stage was denial, but mm -hmm. I'm so committed to getting better that I accepted the fact that it was happening and that's how my uh, journey to recovery started. Mm -hmm. uh, and obvious, since I am a musician, the best outlet for that, for that struggle, for that pain was music. Yes. And I actually wrote Evaporate about nine years ago. Wow. Yeah. So nice. And it just, I sat down and literally wrote it in within one hour. Wow. I, happens <laughs> yeah you just come to the piano and it just it's, it's as if I've, I've known this song forever like I I wrote it and I was so happy with um how I managed to put what I was feeling into music and lyrics yes but I wasn't I wasn't ready to release it yet mm -hmm. and I knew I I needed um I needed to be perfect yeah so it took me six years, mm -hmm. five years to find the right producer to produce it. Wow. I, I think it was, yeah, on the third attempt, I found the, the right person. Yeah. I spent a lot of money. I spent a lot of time, yes. a lot of effort and nerves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, third time was a charm. Mm. And uh, I found this uh, person that actually I've been listening to his music since I was little in Russia. Wow. Hour of internet on social media. I just Googled his name. I found him on Facebook. I messaged him. I sent him the demo. I was like, hey, I'm, your, I'm a big fan of yours. I'm also a musician. I now live in New York. I would love for you to do this song for me. Mm -hmm. And he responded within hours. Who would have thought? That is amazing. That also means that it was destined to be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, he is uh, he is a Canadian producer who lives in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. He has a huge love for Russian people and for Russian culture. So it was like, oh. a <laughs> he responds like, yes, totally. Let's do this. You sound great. And... A month later, I was on a plane to mm -hmm. Los Angeles, and that's when we recorded the song. But then it took me another two years. <laughs> wow. But I think it took me so long because I, was, I wasn't ready to go public with what, with what I was dealing with. And I didn't want to release the song without letting people know what it was about. Yeah. So, and I actually, the first shooting day of the video was exactly a year ago on this day. Oh, wow. That's I can't, such a coincidence. It's been so long. 
but it's it's so like I believe that everything happens for a reason. I believe in signs. I believe in symbolism, and I I felt like it was so symbolic because while I was shooting the video, one of my friends uh, told me about this book um, that explain that it's a story of how one woman recovered from an eating disorder, and she's like, you know, it's very helpful. Um, I found really awesome tips. Got got a lot of good information from this book. And I was reading this book as if I was reading my own story. Wow. And I finished this book on the last day of the editing process. And something just clicked and I knew that it was over. Wow. Wow. So it's been, it's been over a year Mm. that I haven't encountered any uh, eating disorder uh, symptoms yeah wow I've never felt so free and I felt like with this by releasing this video by going public I put an end to it and it was a celebration of my recovery that's so beautiful Anastasia that's so nice it's great and I think that I can't imagine being in a place so far from home and going through something like that. Of course, you weren't alone, but, you know, in a way, I think any mental illness, it can feel very isolating, you know? Is that right? Yeah, it definitely. That one of, the, um, one of the biggest issues is isolation because you feel embarrassed. Mm-hmm feel that what is happening with you is not happening to anyone else. No one else will understand. Yeah. Once I educated myself on what it is, on mm-hmm. how it starts, on how what make what makes it better, yeah. what makes it worse. Like once you educate yourself, you can clearly see that it's an illness. Yeah. There are steps that people make that get them there. And right. there that people can take to get out of there. Wow. But since it's a mental illness, like everybody has different thinking, everybody gets triggered by different things. Yeah. It's very important to keep educating yourself, mm-hmm. keep looking for new information. And at one point, this particular piece of information is going to make it click and it's going to make it clear for you. Yeah. That's why I... Um, I've made posts on social media and I shared information that helped me. It doesn't mean that if this information didn't help you, you're hopeless. No, that means you have to keep looking for something that's going to click with you. Yes. Yes. I totally resonate with that also. And uh, I think it's very selfless that you dedicate your time and dedicated your artistry to raising awareness about it and also providing resources to people. Because I think the danger in that isolation is that you don't know where to turn for resources sometimes. I think some people can have a feeling of that hopelessness that you were talking about, that there's nothing out there for them. So just you providing yourself, showing yourself, showing that some something that's so personal, that's incredibly difficult to talk about, I think is so selfless and so incredibly brave. And I, people um, saying that, but it's, I don't feel, um, I don't feel like it's something extraordinary. Like I don't feel that I'm brave for speaking about it mm-hmm. because I understand that it's an, Ill, an illness. You're not ashamed when you, uh, when you get sick. Like, yeah, sure. When you when you break your arm, like whatever happens to you, yeah. like this is not something to be ashamed of. Right. This Definitely. is something that happens so yeah. that happens and something that goes away. Yeah. And that's why nobody should feel ashamed for seeking help, for speaking about it. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Yeah. I think that it's a, a difficult thing only because there has been so little talk about it. There has been so little exposure right? It's not something that we hear about all the time, like a cold, like the flu. And that's why I think it's great to, in fact, it is completely normal. So 
let's normalize it, right? Let's let's provide the resources, which I think is why my reaction is that's so important. It's so cool because I think until very recently there hasn't been even a lot of research on the matter, right? I mean, yeah, that this illness is not that old. Mm -hmm. Definitely came in with um, fashion industry. Yeah, it, was, it got worse with social media. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's definitely a first world <laughs> country <laughs> problem. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's a it's a very uh a lot of people go through it right now. Yes. So it the researchers need to continue. Like we need to keep talking about it and I'm pretty sure there's going to be more and more tools on how to deal with it. Yeah. But it's gladly it's getting better. Like yeah. we sat on it for a little bit and now there is a body positive movement. Now people are acknowledging that people are different. Yes. Yes. Beauty, size and shape. And I'm pretty sure uh, soon we're going to find more tools on how to deal with it. And maybe I can contribute. I would be delighted i'd be it'd be the biggest uh honor to uh, work on someone for developing new tools yeah because i come from russia and i know that russia is a little behind on mm. the research and i was maybe thinking um getting in touch with people uh to at least getting these books that help me translated into That's russia right and distrib distributed there so that would be amazing that would be a great help i think yeah that's wonderful and tell us about the video process of making evaporate because the video is beautiful is there any imagery in evaporate that we should pay also special attention to uh symbolism that you use that communicate a little bit more about your experience yes once again the video is very symbolic and um i didn't i never thought i was gonna have a music video for this song i just wanted to have a lyric video but um i spoke to um frankie uh, uh the director of this uh, music video and he was like you know what the song deserve deserves the message deserves um a music video so let's work on that he actually, I told him what I wanted to um, portray. Yeah. And he came up with this uh, with a script. So there's this, uh, as you going to see, there's this red, red ghost mm -hmm. that embodies a mental illness. Mm -hmm. And I keep saying that I dedicated the song to uh, everyone who has suffered from a mental illness, particularly yeah. an eating disorder. But I feel like it's um, it's kind of the the same scheme, but it then when you name a specific illness, then it a little varies a little, but the concept is the same. So the red ghost it just follows you everywhere. Yes, it follows you everywhere, and at one point you'll see there's my my friend Hannah, who's a pole dancer. She's also in this video. Yeah. At one point that it just like eats it all yeah um uh that that is how it feels sometimes mm -hmm. but as i always say never give up and no matter how hard things are all you have to do is keep your head above the water yeah and it's very symbolic i never told this phrase to frankie I never um, spoke to him about any specific details, but at the very last moment, we decided to do the scene in the water. Yes. And the very last scene, like you're gonna see, I'm all I'm all the way in the water up until here. Yeah. And this is I always say that to people because um, I have some friends, I have uh, people from eating disorder groups that I sometimes talk to, mm -hmm. and I always no matter I tell them. No matter how hard things are, even even when life feels when it's too much to handle, all you have to do is breathe. All you have to do is keep your head above the water. I love and that. That is the final scene. Really beautiful. 
It's super beautiful. Yeah. Uh, you've said so much, and I also really appreciate that at the end of your video, you put resources for people who are struggling, and that's really great. If you have um, anything else that you might want to tell people, uh, some words of encouragement or anything who might be struggling. Um, as I said before, since it's a fairly new um, illness, mm -hmm. we don't know that much about it. And there are some um, groups and some um, strategies that say that in this case, recovery is not possible, that you mm. can arrest the problem, but it never goes away. It is not true. Yeah. It is absolutely not true. I know it for myself. All you have to do is keep going. Again, keep educating yourself. Yes. Because this is... Like when you have a problem with your head, you don't like there's no pill that fixes it. Right. But all you have to do is keep looking for information, keep fighting, keep keep your eyes open for yes. something that's gonna come into your life and fix this problem. I truly believe that this recovery is possible. I know for myself. And if anybody, anybody is going through a similar thing, I wish you the fastest recovery possible. And if anybody from watching this uh, video has any questions, please contact me. I'm always happy to give resources. I'm always happy to listen and to encourage and to help. That's wonderful. Well, thank you, Anastasia. I think that's going to help a lot of people. And maybe what we can do, I don't know if you're okay with that, maybe I can ask you for some resources, I can link them below in the comment yeah. section. Is that okay? Yeah. Great. Well, if you don't mind, we can have a look at your beautiful video, Evaporate. Yes, let's do it.
That was so beautiful. I loved every second of it. I think also the the song, the melody is so captivating. Your voice is incredible. Oh, and you're so kind. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. And I'm just really grateful that you came on the show today and that you shared this beautiful story. It was an honor. Oh, no, it's an honor for me. And I'm so incredibly proud of you. And I will continue to, whenever you have anything else you want to share, any music, I will continue to pull. Well, now that we're quarantine. Yeah. New music is coming. Yeah. <laughs> and we can't wait. <laughs> Evaporate was beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Anastasia. I'm so grateful to you and love you so much. Thank you, darling. Love you too. Bye. Excuse-moi, je t'entends pas.